President Trump that he can't manage this war. He can't bring peace because of the Putin. If, but always we have if. If he is not trying and if he is not ready to give our territory uh, for this terrible man, for, 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 for the Putin. If. Can you help skeptical lawmakers and Americans who don't want to send more money to Ukraine? How long should they expect to send more money? When do you anticipate you can end this war, President Zelensky? I think that the next year with the challenges, because this is the year of your elections, uh, now again we see the uh, critical situation in the Middle East. So I think uh, the, your help is very important for the next year. And that is crucial. And I think if we will manage all that thing that I said, the gap will be minimized in our budget. And after that, after next year, if, if, the war will not finish next year if, if it will not finish. I think that using air defense system, using this platform of cooperation, co-production, and using these uh, new jobs, I think we will manage to minimize this gap and you will not uh, help us such high price, I'm sure. That's it. Hey there, guys. Welcome to the channel. Yeah, so as you see there, the grift continues, but rest assured, my fellow gullible Americans, you only need to prop up and you only need to fund Eastern Europe for about another year or so. And then, only then, will you be able to focus on the more trivial things, the unimportant things like your own border security, your own drug problem, your own homeless veterans and homeless problem as a whole. Just a few more years, guys. And guys, come, come on. Let me know in the comments what you really think about that. You know, I personally, I cannot believe anyone is still buying it. And one of the people still buying it, or at least doing a really, really great job of pretending like he is, is everyone's favorite state propagandist, Jim Acosta. And he recently, honestly, got completely demolished by Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm going to show you some more of that. But first, guys, thank you to everyone who's been subscribing, leaving great comments. Really appreciate the support. If you haven't already, Join us. Help us to continue to grow. Like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. So here's how Jim Acosta thought that he could get Vivek. You know, Acosta gets particularly really, really offended by Donald Trump referring to the January 6th political prisoners as hostages. And just watch the way that Acosta tries to frame this and watch Vivek as usual just completely outsmart and outmaneuver these lazy media propagandists. I think many peaceful protesters on January 6th should absolutely not be in prison. We have a dual standard of justice in this country, one standard applied. But Trump is Antifa using the word hostages. Do you think that they're hostages? For the prior that, two years. Isn't that irresponsible to call them well, hostages my view is, with what's going on in Israel right now? Yeah, so pay very, very close attention to what he's actually doing here. Hamas took hostages, which, by the way, most of CNN's viewers actually applaud. But because Hamas took hostages, that somehow makes it more egregious, more irresponsible for Trump to refer to peaceful protesters still in federal prison as hostages. And honestly, this is just prototypical lazy narrative peddling games that these people play. And he's one of the best at it, to be honest. You know, right now, there are people sitting at home that are so weak-minded that they just had the line, lines drawn in their mushy brain by this guy, you know, and they now believe that all the bad stuff happening in the Middle East is just Trump, Trump, Trump. All they can think about now is Trump. What's going on in Israel right now? I mean, Jim, let me, let me just be really clear about what's irresponsible as it relates to coverage of Donald Trump. And I think that your network and others like you owe some accountability here from the Rush Trump Russia collusion hoax that never was to the Hunter Biden laptop story that was actually real before people before the election were told that it was false. So I think that the real accountability here belongs to the media. Speak the truth, right, admit the question, accountability the where you are wrong. Whether, the question In many is cases, whether you agree with them calling six them protesters hostages. were yeah. denied constitutional rights. Well, I think I, I agree with the spirit of it. The spirit of it is those people, many of them have been denied their constitutional rights and many of them who are peaceful they're going through the justice process they're being of the prosecuted. rule of law to them than somebody else 
Well, I don't think that, that, that many of those prosecutions are just. My view is if you're using one standard of political prosecution for somebody because they have political views different from your own, that's not justice. That is injustice. And that's why I've said that anybody who is a peaceful protester on January 6th, for those peaceful protesters, they will earn a pardon from me on day one. And I will stand by that, Jim. All right. And you made waves this week uh, for the deal. You said you would cut with Vladimir Putin to end Russia's war in Ukraine. Let's listen to this. The most important element is Russia exit its military alliance with China. We make a hard commitment that NATO not admit Ukraine to NATO. Tell me on this deal. And then, and then here we'd freeze the current lines of control. What? Freeze the current you lines of control. You would give Putin everything I wouldn't give stolen? him anything. I would freeze the current lines of control. Yeah, so I can only assume, let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, that Jim Acosta, he's about to lose his mind doing some <laughs> class A mental gymnastics to paint this in a negative light. But, but just know, you know, and we need to do a video about this, about what's really going on in Ukraine, but just know this, guys, that this is exactly what American and European leaders are attempting to negotiate at this very moment as you watch this video. Even the mainstream liberal media, they're starting to acknowledge the Ukraine is not winning. At the very, very best case, we're at a stalemate. Our government and our American military, they've been lying to us about Ukrainian progress for months, at least for months, to make us feel all warm and all fuzzy about sending them their allowance. And, you know, our government right now is in the process of basically forcing Zelensky to the negotiating table, and they're starting to try and figure out just how much they're going to give up to Putin for peace. They're doing exactly what Vivek says he would do. And all while they smear Vivek as some sort of foreign policy moron. Why would you cut a deal with Vladimir Putin? Why would you trust Putin to keep his end of a deal? I don't trust Putin, but I trust Putin to follow his self-interest just as he can trust us to follow ours. And the fact of the matter is our engagement in Ukraine has been a disaster. Everybody in Ukraine would still tell you it's now stalled to a standstill. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of deaths on both sides. Now the U.S. entering greater risk with Russia. The first time we've never had a nuclear non-proliferation agreement in place with Russia. But and secretly, Putin, many U.S. officials are beginning to admit that there has to be a deal. Doesn't that show well, some naivete have hard on, your, conditions. on your part? We're going to have... To the contrary, the naivete is the pointless wars that we've spent in Iraq and Afghanistan. This is Iraq 2.0 unfolding again. Jim, if the people who are advocating for this war a year and a half ago are already meekly beginning to admit, even those you'll have on this network, beginning to admit that it was a failure, it has not met expectations, thousands and thousands of lives lost, greater risk hundreds of billions of dollars later, this is a pointless war. So cut the losses I think the now. Ukra the Ukrainians have surprised a lot of people that allows Ukraine to come out with Russians. its sovereignty. We're why, why would the you, fact why of the matter is the eastern progress? parts of Ukraine that are occupied, well, the progress has already halted. The fact of the matter is, and you know, you can even read what the Ukrainian general just said this week. He first admitted that it's reached a standstill. So let's be sensible, do a reasonable deal that allows Ukraine to come out with its sovereignty intact, but pull apart the Russia-China military alliance. That's what uh, nobody's uh, talking about. We are driving Russia further into China's hands. We need to be focused on pulling them apart and make a commitment that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO. That is a sensible yeah. deal. You mark my words, this is where this is going to go eventually. We might as well go there now before more lives and more dollars are wasted. Well, yeah, so there you have that. Lead propagandist Jim Acosta trying to paint Vivek and really Republicans as a whole as some sort of Putin apologist for advocating for exactly what is actually happening and what our government is actually quietly advocating for and trying to accomplish themselves. And honestly, one thing I will say, Congress needs to be very, very careful to not politicize the Ukrainian funding because it's totally, honestly, it's to I believe it's totally reasonable to tie it to border control, but please guys, be very, very careful to not give the Democrats any excess propaganda material because you know it'd be right out of their playbook to negotiate a closed door agreement for peace, surrendering parts of Ukraine, probably too many parts of Ukraine to Russia, and then frame it as a great loss for democracy that can be fully, fully blamed on Republicans' love for Putin, or however they want to frame it. You know, sadly, people are dumb enough to actually believe every single bit of that. And what they need to do, honestly, Congress I'm talking about, is tread very, very carefully and do everything they possibly can 
to secure as much of Ukraine for Ukrainians as possible. Make people like Jim Acosta go the other direction that is also highly likely for them to take, which is I think they could also frame it, you know, as a brutal defeat for Putin and frame it in a way that places all the credit right on the frail, tired old shoulders, shoulders of Joe Biden. But anyway, guys, that's just my take. Let me know your take in the comments. And if you haven't already, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Most importantly, share the channel. We'll see you in the next one.